Radio stories of the Highway Patrol. Information was given to us before it entered our area that there were two small children in the vehicle besides the driver. The Highway Patrol is called upon to rescue two children after a dramatic freeway pursuit. We've got four arrested, We've got a crowd gathering. Send me a couple cars, please. I've got SO also en route. A drug and weapons bus gets hot when a suspect resists arrest. A CHP officer finds himself in a life or death struggle after stopping a reckless driver. Doing. I was running the, he's checking the two subjects through the master name file. They have no ID on them. I just got the names and dates of birth. Arkansas State Police stop a wanted man of many aliases. What you're about to see is real. Stories from the files of the California Highway Patrol and other state police agencies across America. Stories from and about patrol officers out on the highway and roads where nothing is ever just routine. Are you on traffic? We made the stop. We're uh, northbound uh, at the Crown Valley off-ramp. We've got all lanes of freeway stopped. We're attempting to make the felony stop now. DB1 attempting to make felony stop northbound 5 at Crown Valley off-ramp. The pursuit in initiated in San Diego. The driver of the truck was involved in a hit-and-run traffic collision on Interstate 8. So they eventually came into Orange County. At that point, uh, the Capistrano CHP office and my officers uh, became involved in the pursuit. Information was given to us before it entered our area that there were two small children in the vehicle besides the driver. And uh, it was obviously doing something to the children, though I really couldn't tell what. Sergeant Jenkins and Officer Smith ordered the suspect out of the vehicle for approximately 10 minutes. We were also advised during the, the, the uh, as we were going up the freeway that he had a, possibly had a gun with him. So to, see if, to check to see if he had a gun, I went up to the embankment. I walked up the embankment and saw I was above his truck, but I could see down inside. That's when I first noticed the little girl sitting in the middle, the little boy on the right side. I didn't see a gun, but I did see the two kids inside the vehicle, and the vehicle did have a lot of different uh, things inside. It was apparent to me that the situation had reached basically a standoff and was not going to move forward. After consulting with Captain Driver, we decided that we would make an attempt to rescue the children. I came up on the left-hand side, the driver's side of the, the, the truck, um, with Officer uh, Dumas, and uh, Officer Dumas uh, tr tried to open the door, and uh, the door was locked. And at that, that time, we elected to uh, break out the window so we could get the, the door open, or at least get inside the vehicle to distract the driver so we could get the kids out. That was our main concern. Sergeant Jenkins attempted to reach inside and grab the, the little boy, but he was actually tied with the seat belt. He was in an infant seat, and he actually had his feet tied with the seat belt, so we couldn't get him out. The father leaped over at us, yelling at us uh, about the Hell's Angels and Satanics and things of this nature, and we tried to grab him. Children were screaming. Uh, it was a very chaotic situation. With the officers pulling from the outside, I was able to push him uh, from the inside to get him out of the vehicle. And finally, we had more officers over. I was able to grab his hair. And once we grabbed his hair, we just, I just yanked, and we all tumbled out of the back of the, or off the side of the truck. And then we were able to get him under control, uh, down on the ground. Once we uh, got the driver out, um, he was very combative. And he, was, uh, he, was, he wasn't a big man, but he was very, very powerful. Well, Officer Moorhead, who uh, assisted, uh, is uh, a big man. And we were talking, well, who's going to get the kids? I said, well, Greg, they probably need you on the ground, you know, holding this guy down, because you're a lot bigger than I am, and they could really use your help down there. And he said, hey, great, no problem. And that's when he went down and assisted taking the driver into custody. And, and the, uh, myself and uh, Sergeant Jenkins removed the, uh, the two children. Immediately afterwards, we tried to get the children as far as way was possible at the time away from well, what turned out to be their father. Uh, they were very upset, crying. I did my best to try to console them and uh, let them know that we're not the enemy, but we're there to help. We just wanted to get those kids away from there. They've been through a lot. And we just want to get him away from the scene and over by our patrol car somewhere, and that's what we did. It took five of us to be able to get him down and hold his feet down and, and actually handcuff him. He was then uh, taken to the patrol car, placed in the back of the patrol car, and transported to Orange County Jail. I was trying to go up to God's land and, and with my two babies. Well, he was charged with child endangerment, evading arrest, uh, assault and battery on a police officer, and possibly being under the influence.
The uh, grandparents came down and took custody of the children here at the uh, CHP office in San Juan Capistrano. It's, it's tough uh, when you're a, a family man yourself to see what happens to people. I mean, these kids are nothing but innocent victims. You just remember, you know, your own kids. And the first thing in your mind, and utmost, is the kid's safety. And you'll do anything to protect those kids. Illegal drugs have impacted every segment of our society, directly or indirectly. When drivers use illegal drugs, the impact can be devastating. And is of concern, the California Highway Patrol moved in on some crack dealers. A lot of people just milling. I'm milling around the area. We're going to go see what we have here. How you doing? What we have here is about oh, a quarter gram of crack cocaine. Not much. Looks like they've uh, he might have some more secreted on his person. You got cocaine in your pocket. You're under arrest. Okay, you young lady, step right, over here. Put hands on the car. You got any weapons on you? Any drugs on you? Or are you being detained for trespassing in the facility in this area? You got any needles on you? Keep your hands up there, please. Whose black bag is that? I don't know. I just walked out the house, man. You don't know? Uh-uh. In the area, check the contents of the bag. You only got a weapon. You got a sawed off. Looks like a, a rifle. We're we'll preserving for print. That's why we're using our gloves. There was a drive-by earlier today, but uh, and three subjects in a pickup truck for 187 about three hours ago. Uh, we will preserve it for print and uh, they'll have uh, investigators you know, be advised. Yeah, yeah just put your hands behind your back. Just relax. Well, you're over here with the jacket and this backpack yeah, with just, the jacket. The backpack with the jacket, you made me lay my jacket down, Thompson. Well, you were there, you were close to that bag. We were all standing right there. You, you were standing right there, that's correct. I say we were all just walked up. You're under arrest. Yeah, well, I know. I just want to make sure you don't fall. Just be cool, all right? Get my coat. Take my coat to the house. No, the coat's going to stay right there for right now, okay? Just have a seat here for a little bit till we sort everything out. There you go. Get G Money on camera, man. G Money, man. I think this belongs to the lady. What were you feeling in here? We got some, some pipes or something. It might be a prescription asthma. Sure, what's this paper right there? What's this inside? It's like a rock. Yeah, yeah that's rock. Yeah, that's rock. We got, some more, we got a little more dope hidden in the asthma. Asthma container. Good size, good size. Yeah, that's a good size rock right there. This bag belongs to a woman. And we do have a woman detained. I recall seeing this woman in the area two days ago in this jacket. So she's going to go for possession of narcotics as well with the contents of the bag. Okay. We got a name dated February. February 9th. Nine, William C. William. C William is, uh, he's a gentleman. He's G-Man or G-Dollar. Isn't that the street name he says he is? G-Hero. That's the guy in the car? That's the guy in the car. Oh, okay. That was, so we got two people here. It's and both of them are in possession of this bag. Got it. Go for it. Are you resisting arrest? Unless you submit, you're going to be made. We've got four arrested, got a crowd gathering. Send me a couple cars, please. I've got SO also en route. Don't make no threats, man. You're already under arrest for resisting and interfering in police business. Don't make no threats. You should have stayed out of it. So you calm down now? Do I got to keep you tied up? Okay. You were tripping, man. You want to fight and everything. Yeah, I don't want to fight you, you man. Tell you you, you, know? you, you got to stay out of police business. Okay, whatever. Okay. Uh, they're involved with the, uh, the weapon in the bag. I'm going to take them both. And the one for the drugs. 
The other gentleman was interfering in police officers uh, in the performance of their duties. He's going to go for 148. And uh, so we've got foreign custody, which uh, typifies the amount of uh, problems in the area. There's drugs, there's guns, and there's uh, there's violence. So. Anytime you need our help, okay, we're here for hey, you, we buddy. Appreciate hey, we Take care. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. All right. We got him. Next, a life and death struggle when a CHP tow driver wants to be arrested and put in jail. But it is one of the consequences from operating a motor vehicle in a dangerous and unsafe manner. When CHP officer Gary Harrell of Fresno, California, observed such a violation on July 29, 1988, he knew he had to act quickly. He took immediate action to bring a dangerous situation to a halt, even though the driver had other ideas. At 2 o'clock p.m., patrol officer Gary Harrell, at the end of his shift, receives a report from the Fresno Communications Center that a reckless and possible DUI driver is speeding southbound on Highway 99. The driver, a male Hispanic, is traveling alone. Officer Harrell positions his car near an on-ramp to the freeway, where he can observe the southbound traffic. Okay, for said, I have the vehicle in sight, and I'll be attempting to overtake southbound 99 at Chestnut. When he sees the described vehicle, a 4x4 Chevy Blazer passing at high speed, he immediately follows in pursuit. For said, I believe I have the vehicle spotted. The Blazer, weaving in traffic, changes lanes abruptly and nearly hits the road shoulder several times. The erratic driver now catches the attention of a mother and her daughter. <gasps> Look at this guy! Oh my gosh! Look at him driving like an idiot! The two home. women are determined oh to keep the car in sight until they can alert a highway patrol unit. Let's follow this guy for a while. The suspect continues speeding southbound on Highway 99. By now, Officer Harrell is right behind the suspect's vehicle. However, the driver does not yield to the bright lights and siren. The suspect continues to speed across several lanes of traffic, endangering himself and the drivers around him. Both Officer Harrell and the women are concerned about everyone's safety. The officer continues the pursuit at high speed for several more miles. The driver finally gives up and pulls over. Merced, this is Unit 21, subject yielding at southbound 99 at Fowler Road. I'll be making approach. As Officer Harrell radios his position to dispatch, the two women pull over intending to complain about the suspect's driving. They hadn't a clue as to what they were about to witness. As Officer Harrell approaches the van, he speaks to the driver through the open window. The driver appears drunk and refuses to get out. Step out of the vehicle. No jail. No jail. Step out of the car. No jail. When the officer opens the door, he grabs the suspect using the bent wrist control hold on the left hand. When Officer Harrell tries to apply handcuffs, the driver surprises him. Using his right hand, he reaches under his jacket toward the small of his back, where he has concealed a revolver. He momentarily throws the officer off balance and pulls out the handgun. The officer manages to push the barrel of the suspect's gun upward and at the same time pulls out his own revolver, firing six times point-blank at the suspect. The suspect staggers back around to the open door and falls. Five of the six shots hit the man in the chest, abdomen, and arms. An off-duty male Wait, nurse arrives on the scene. Okay, I'm a registered nurse. I'm a registered nurse. All right, why don't you help me out here? Okay. And finds that the driver is fatally wounded. Further investigation reveals a large amount of black tar heroin partially hidden beneath the driver's seat. Street value estimated at $150,000. The fatally wounded driver was identified as Diego Ortiz Quintero, a 28-year-old illegal alien from Sinaloa, Mexico. An autopsy later revealed evidence of both alcohol and cocaine.
Next, Arkansas State Police meet a man whose names are as numbered as his crimes. That's another part of the job. As Trooper Cherry Reynolds of the Arkansas State Police found out when he responded to back up another trooper. You got some ID on you? No, sir. You call my name in. I'm sorry. What is your name? Anthony. Anthony what? What's your date of birth, Anthony? Can't hear you, sir. 7268. 7 How old are you? Guess again. If you're born in 68, you're 24 years old. Whose TV is all this stuff in here? That's yours? You got ID with you? How much your buddy had to drink back there, the driver? What I was doing, I was running the, checking the two subjects through the master name file. They have no ID on them. I've just got the names and dates of birth. You've had several weapons charges and things through Little Rock PD, haven't you? Anthony, you got any weapons with you tonight? Well, you like to say you've been known to carry them. That's why Little Rock has that on you. Anything else in the car I ought to know? Huh? Anything else in the car I ought to know about? Well, we're fixing to, because we got a wrecker on the way for it. Your, your, your compadre is going to jail for DWI. Hang on just a second. Also said you got warrants out of Little Rock for you. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Nope, you're not. That's why I'm, that's why I'm checking you here, okay? Okay. I don't, they didn't tell me what the warrants are for. You got something you didn't, didn't appear in court for? I don't think so. You got a lighter and uh, a little pocket knife there. That's his little pocket knife. Okay, the other officer's gonna take you in Little Rock Jail. You're gonna have to post bond down there on your warrant. Huh? Which way you need to go? What you got in the bag there? Oh, okay, that's it. That's your Colt 45 or that old England? What is it? What is it? Oh, Budweiser. Okay, I didn't see what. Go ahead. He's still trying to confirm him on Little Rock, make sure it is him. Last charge was committed for capital felony murder. The, uh, found not guilty the warrant is on, uh, I believe, an ivory, but he uses as an AK, or AKA is, a, is ivory, his last name. Right now we show one of them, possibly with warrants out of Little Rock Police Department. They're still working to confirm his identity because it was under one of his aliases. He has numerous aliases. Uh, also, previous warrants on everything from aggravated robbery to capital felony murder. 